Do you have your Bibles? Last Sunday, you remember we talked about that Satan has been defeated. You remember that? And that the victory is ours. We read from the book of Ephesians chapter number 1 from verse 15 down to the last verse and then we also read in Hebrews chapter number 2, 14th verse. I'd like to read that uh, Hebrews chapter 2 again and that 14th verse. Glory to God. He says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And deliver them who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Glory to God. Beautiful. So the victory of Jesus Christ over Satan was for our sake. He defeated the devil for us, meaning that we don't have any trouble with the devil. Because as far as we are concerned, he's been defeated. Hey, come on. Say the devil has been defeated. He was defeated for me. Which means I have defeated the devil. That's sure. You know, but for a lot of people, Satan is a problem. For many Christians, Satan is a problem. There are those who believe they need deliverance from the devil. And they do, because you see, as far as they can believe that Satan has them whipped, they are whipped. They believe they have been defeated by the devil, they are defeated. They believe they need deliverance, they do need it. <laughs> because you see, they let the devil defeat them. And that means living a defeated life. Thinking the devil is so strong and powerful. But this is because of the lack of knowledge. It's a lack of knowledge. Lack of spiritual understanding. Did you ever ask yourself, why do many people have so much trouble with Satan? Satan that's been defeated. Why do so many people have trouble with the devil? Many have never been taught. Then some others are too hard-headed. They've been taught, but never accepting knowledge. Because, you see, they believe more in their experiences than they do God. They believe their experiences. They say, well, if I'm delivered, I will know I'm delivered. You see, they're going by their experiences. And all the time they're talking about their experiences. They're talking about the, the nightmares. They're talking about the pain, the affliction that they suffer with. All the time, that's the story. How can a Christian come out of that trouble? If he got himself into it, how does he come out of it? <laughs> simply by walking out 
We say that it sounds too simple. How can anybody walk out? But it's true. Just by walking out. In the 14th chapter of the book of Acts, you read from verse 7 down, the Bible tells us how that at the city called Lystra, Paul was preaching the gospel. The man who was important in these feet never walked from birth. And he was sitting on the ground listening to the words of the apostle Paul. And then Paul said, perceiving that the man had faith to be healed, he just said, stand up right on thy feet. That's all. Didn't pray. He said, man, get up. That's all he said. Get up. Now that's a man who never walked. He said, get up. And he got up. Get up. Because that's the gospel. The gospel is good news. It means if you couldn't walk, now you can. If you were poor, poverty is over. If you were defeated, defeat is over. Victory has come. If you were in the dark, light has come. Hey, walk out of the dark. And walk in the light. Simple. But you know, like in many things, people think if it's too simple, it's not real. If it's too simple, it's not real. It's going to be hard to be true. If you told them to get a spotless white cow <laughs> of eight years old, exactly, a white cock with a red crown, Then, along with that, two young pigeons, <laughs> pure white, bring them. And we will cut them and buzz you with their blood. And you'll be all right. Don't do it! They, they'll be excited at that. They believe because they did something that was difficult. See, man always wants to buy God out, but it doesn't work with him. Hallelujah. Well, this gospel is not cheap, it's free. Amen. It's not cheap, but it's free. It's free. If you were told to do something about it, you couldn't have made it. Too hard. Simply impossible. No one would have ever made it. But Jesus made it and gave us the result. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why it's free. But it's not cheap. Glory. Hallelujah. So, you, you, now that you are away in the word of God, that Satan has been defeated and that the victory has been given to you, why don't you make a choice of the life you would live? Many of us here have made a choice. Am I right? Yeah, a lot of us have made a choice. And we are living victoriously. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, but every, every now and then we have to pull some of those who haven't understood what we're talking about yet, you know. We have to step back a little and pull them along with us. Yeah. Otherwise, I love it when I share among people who are spiritually minded. It's exciting when you have such a meeting. But you know, every now and then, there are those who don't understand it, we've got to pull them along. along. Well, well, well. Romans chapter 5. Book of Romans chapter number 5. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I love it, I love it, I love it. Somebody say, what kind of song is that? A great one. Beautiful. <laughs> and Bible says to make melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. You know, sometimes you sing in the spirit. It doesn't sound nice to someone who's listening. Because they say, what kind of tune is that? He says, a spiritual one. 
Hallelujah. Did you ever, did you ever hear someone laughing and you thought, why is he laughing like that? Didn't sound funny. Ha 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 ha. So, are you laughing or what's the matter? <laughs> Say, I'm laughing. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, there are people who are always waiting for someone to make them happy. Never wait for someone to make you happy. And there are always those who are trying to make you sad. Because they are sad and they feel everybody around them ought to be sad. I refuse to be sad. sad. Nobody's going to make me unhappy. Ha ha ha! Romans chapter 5, and I'm reading to you from verse 17. For if by one man's offense, talking about Adam, if by one man's offense death reigned like a king, that reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ he's not talking about reigning in heaven because you're not going to be reigning in heaven there's nothing to reign over in heaven you reign in the earth over circumstances that fail to recognize god you reign over them you triumph over them you reign over devils and demons of hell you reign over them Hallelujah. That's what it's talking about. You reign over life circumstances. Look at it, it's right there. If by one man's offense death reigned by one, said for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Jesus Christ. That's talking about us. Then it says, they which receive abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness, gift of righteousness. So righteousness is a gift. That's another day's subject. But notice where it says, they shall reign in life. Reign in life. If you're waiting to feel righteous, you're wasting your time. The devil is going to make sure you don't feel righteous. You know, sometimes when you fast and pray, you feel clean. And you want to, like, I just thank the Lord. You know, you, 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 you want to be stainless. You'd wish every day would be like that, don't, until some fellow somewhere says something against you or to you or about you, something that makes you... <laughs> and you feel like, forgive me, Lord. Now everything spoils. <laughs> I mean, the forgive me prayers have already started. You thought you were over that for a week. Now your life has been, since you fasted and prayed and read the Bible, it's just been, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You haven't asked for forgiveness for some time now. Thank you, Lord. Until that telephone call came, and it was the wrong number, and you told the fellow it's the wrong number, he called you again. <laughs> and you said, I said it's the wrong number. And he said, I'm sorry, and called you again. And then finally he said, what's the matter with you? <laughs> and then, oh Lord, forgive me. <laughs> now he spoiled your day. So you think you've dropped from your level of righteousness. <laughs> Listen. You don't grow in righteousness. Are you listening? This is very important. Some people think they grow in righteousness. You cannot grow in righteousness. The righteousness of God that is given to you is a gift of God. You cannot increase in it. Your righteousness does not increase. You can be more righteous in heaven than you are today. Because the righteousness you have is the righteousness of Jesus Christ given to you. Not your righteousness. 
Your own righteousness will not work. So Jesus obeyed God and got that righteousness and gave it to you. So you stand in the presence of God with the righteousness of God from Jesus Christ. So when God looks at you, he doesn't see your own righteousness. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that's what qualifies you. That's how you qualify to talk to him, to pray to him. You qualify not by what you did or didn't do, but by what he did, Jesus Christ. That's why we have boldness to pray. You know, one time somebody listened to another preacher pray, and when the preacher prayed, he said, In the name of Jesus, I command, he was in a, I command this to happen. I command, I can say, How can he just keep commanding? Does he know he's talking to God? No, we're not commanding God. We're commanding with the power of God. How can you pray with so much boldness? How can you speak to God with so much audacity? How could you? Well, because of the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God gives you the sense of dominion. It gives you a sense of boldness and confidence in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Did, did you ever read in your Bible where Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still until he won the war? Wonderful. That's amazing. When Moses stretched his hand over the Red Sea <laughs> and it split wide open, the Bible says the waters congealed. The waters congealed on both sides. At the faith of a man, what can we not do? I can't see it. I can't see what we can't do. No, 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 no. Amazing. Hallelujah. God always wants to listen to us. Believe that. God always wants to listen to us. He always wants to listen to us. <laughs> Oh dear Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I read St. Matthew's Gospel to you? St. Matthew chapter number 17. Listen, Jesus wants you to live a triumphant life. Say that with me, a triumphant life. Every day. every day now there are people who don't believe that they say in life there ought to be ups and downs Who's who said so who said so how did they know they're reading other people's experiences and their own experiences not because God said so and they've never thought about it they've made their experiences and the experiences of other people the rule for their life they say in life there are ups and downs. Who said? Because that's what they're acquainted with. That's all they've ever known. That's all they've ever been taught. The word of God never said so. 
They are like the Jews. When Jesus, when Jesus called God his heavenly father, they picked up stones. Because nobody ever called God father. Everybody before Jesus said, God. God. Adonai. El Shaddai. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rafeka. That's all they knew. Nobody ever called him Father. And so when Jesus came and said, Father, they said, who is he talking about? God? Our great God? How can you call him your Father? Because to call him your Father means you are his son. <laughs> You know, they understood the implication. And to say that you are his son is to say that you are in the same class with him, the same nature with him. They say, how dare you? You see it? Religion blinded them. So when you talk about having a great life, they say, oh, no, 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 no. Because everybody's used to something different. Say this with me. I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. I'm a success. I'm a success. Now you see, you can have that success mentality and you find it working through you. I'm a success in everything. In everything. I'm a success. Come on, come on. I'm a success. Glory to God. All right, look at this. Samadhi's Gospel, chapter number 17, right? In the... <laughs> Jesus here responds to a question from his disciples. Something happened. Uh, a, a man had brought his son to Jesus. And um, the, 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 his son had been possessed of a devil. And he wanted Jesus to cast the demon out of his son. Out of his little boy. And when he got there, Jesus was not immediately present with his disciples. And so they brought the boy, he brought the boy to the disciples there. And complained and said, please, my little boy is often tormented of a demon who tries to destroy him. And oftentimes he puts him in the water or into the fire to kill him. Please help me cast the devil out. And the disciples tried and tried and tried and shouted and begged and did everything and the demon didn't go. And just about that time Jesus came and uh, he noticed that they were gathered around with the disciples and there somebody there with a, a little boy. And Jesus said, what's the matter? And the man stepped forward to Jesus and said, Master, I brought my boy to you and to your disciples cast the demon out of you. And um, they haven't been able to do it. And so Jesus looked at them and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I bear with you? So he said, Bring the boy here. So they pulled him closer. And then when they pulled the boy closer to Jesus, right away the demon began to manifest himself and threw the boy down and was foaming in the mouth. That was a sign of epilepsy. So Jesus said, to the man for how long has this been and he said uh, uh, from a child and explained to Jesus how the demon had thrown him into the fire and into the water to destroy him and while he was saying that to Jesus his voice broke and he said master if you can do anything have compassion on us and help us with tears in his eyes Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You see, the question wasn't whether Jesus could, because he could. If we're going to have a miracle here on this boy, it's going to have to be you believing. So Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. To him who believes. And the man cried, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. 
<laughs> but you see, he was positive somewhere and said, I believe. And Jesus commanded the devil to come out of the boy and suddenly the demon threw him down as one dead and the people thought he was dead they said oh he's dead he's killed him and jesus waited for a moment and let everybody believe he was dead so they thought he was dead no jesus said come on picked him up and restored him to his father now you know all that time the disciples were very disturbed you know it, it didn't leave their minds so when they were alone with Jesus they came to him and said master you know we did everything we saw you do we said everything we heard you say and um, we noticed you didn't quite say anything different from what we said I mean if he had said something different they would have said oh that's what we didn't say <laughs> I said we said everything you said we did everything you did the demon didn't come out why couldn't we cast him out I love Jesus looked them right in the eye and gave them his answer let's read verse 20 you ready now and Jesus said unto them because of your unbelief that's the problem with many people because of your unbelief why didn't I get that business I prayed I believed why didn't I get it I even saw the seed why didn't I get it because of the unbelief somebody said no 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 if anybody's gonna tell me I was unbelieving I'm not gonna accept it because I prayed I fasted I confessed it I said everything there was to say I said everything there was to say and I can't believe I didn't get it because of unbelief I was not unbelief. hey what is unbelief what's unbelief how could Jesus say to this man because of your own belief you think that was easy on them they'd been with Jesus so long that's in all the miracles proud this time they heard his messages how could they be unbelieving charge them with unbelief no no Jesus must be wrong what do you think Jesus must be wrong this time huh could he be wrong nobody knew like Jesus what faith was nobody knew like Jesus what unbelief was he said it he said it he said because of your unbelief Somebody said, uh, I've had asthma. I've asked God to take it away. I really, 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 really believe. I even sowed my best seed ever. But it hasn't gone. How did you know it hasn't gone? Because it affected me last night. Uh oh. And what did you say when it happened? It hasn't gone. Uh oh. See that? How did the disciples know the demon didn't go because they're waiting to see him go and as long as he was foaming in the mouth they kept on talking come out mm. <laughs> come out <laughs> so he said I believe I believe in the name of Jesus I've gotten that job in fact my letter is waiting for me right now father I'm dressing up and I'm going there to collect it right now in the name of Jesus hey. in it, he got to the office and he said yes what, what do you want I'm here to collect my letter what letter my appointment letter I have it in Jesus Jesus name Jesus. 
I'm not leaving here till I get my letter. In that case, hold on. Then they call the police. Please get this dude out of here. And then take him out. And then, Father, I acted my fate. I don't know. If this is not fate, I don't know what fate is. Yes, you don't! <laughs> I tried everything. You see that? Why is he feeling bad now? Because of the result he got. You see that? Meaning that he didn't expect any resistance. You know, the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they were headed for the promised land. And now Moses says, we need 12 people to go over there to the land of Canaan and find out whether or not that land really flows with milk and honey. We'd like to know. And they say, yay! There are houses. You never have to build your house. You just get into a house and it's yours. Oh! I mean, they were so happy. Everything was there. They were happy and waiting. Then the 12 spies went. Beautiful houses, yes. It flows with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Then they saw the giants, the sons of Enoch. Big, huge. They said, no, we go back to old Moses. And we'll let him know. We're not coming here. And they went back. And Moses was happy to receive them and called the whole congregation. Let's hear the news. And the 12 spies came out. Brethren, we've been there. Hey, did you see the land you hold on? Tell us how is the land? Everybody just wanted to hear milk and honey in the land. They said, yeah, surely the land flows with milk and honey. Ooh, everybody was like, oh, and some of them were spinning around. <laughs> then they said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it flows with milk and honey. We haven't told you the rest of the story. What else? Let's go, let's go. They said, hold on. We saw something else. <laughs> And that's the one that we are not happy about because, you see, we don't like to be deceived. Moses actually told us about the milk and honey, which we found. But he never suggested to us that there was any possibility <laughs> of seeing the giants that we saw. We never saw such huge fellows in all our lives. And the people were, they said, look, they were so big that in our own eyes, we were as grasshoppers. <laughs> and in their eyes, we were also as grasshoppers. Sorry, we cannot take that land. And the congregation started weeping. Moses, why did you deceive us? Why? Two men stood out of the twelve and said, Brethren, if God is with us, we will be able to take the land and we will drive out the giants. You know what the congregation said? Shut up. Didn't you hear there are very many? They shut them up. See, faith doesn't think of the process. Faith has focus on the result. Did you hear that? You know what Joshua and Caleb said? They said, look, those giants shall be bread for us. They shall be bread for us. We'll eat them up. Let's go up at once. 
the congregation said, never. Never. We're moving. That's the way many people are today. And they think that is faith. Faith doesn't chicken out because of the resort, the temporary resort. Okay, I believe I've been healed. I just want to go to the doctor for a proof. So he goes to the doctor for a proof, whoever's in there. Then he, they say, oh, you sure you're all right? He says, yeah, I'm all right. Mm. You sure you're breathing fine? I'm breathing fine, yeah? Look, you are worse now than the last test. Then he goes, you sure? No, no, sir, it can't be. Uh, and I say, look at it. Can you read this thing? Yeah. It's worse now than before. We told you you need surgery. The earlier, the better. So go and make up your mind. It's okay. Then he goes, Father. Now, when he was coming to the hospital, he was rejoicing. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. You know? Now he's going back and he says, Father. Oh. Now he sees himself in the hospital. He sees himself admitted. He sees himself being caught open. And mm -mm. Mm. I reject it. I reject it. And the more he rejects it, the more he sees it. <laughs> so he wonders what faith really is. Because he thought this was faith. He thought it was faith because he proclaimed it and went to the doctor and was expecting something nice and didn't happen. He might have even done it three times. And the doctor was now finally angry and said, why do you keep coming? I've told you this thing is worse. Let me tell you something. Nobody can know faith like the knowledge you can have in your spirit. Because faith is a response of the human spirit to the word of God. It's not a feeling. It's a response of the human spirit to the word of God. And don't let the circumstances of your life be dictated by what others say, but by what the Word of God says. What the Word of God says. And you should be unshaken by the temporary result. Unshaken. In faith, you set your focus. On the result that the word gives to you you stay your mind on the word the Bible says thou would keep him in perfect peace Shalom Shalom the peace of prosperity thou would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee stayed on thee for he trusted in thee so you stay your mind you stay because your mind can wander from place to place. So you stay your mind on what God gives you. You stay your mind. And every day, you set a time to focus your attention on it. Every day. Give yourself the picture of the result you expect by meditation. And then like we talked about the three stages of meditation. You remember? What's the final stage? Hagar. What happens there? You roar. At that point, it just dawns on your spirit. And nobody can take it from you. 
See, at the beginning stages, you're meditating on it. You, you, see, I'm working on something. See, faith may not create it for you at once. It can create it over a period of time. Could be hours, days, weeks, months, or even years, depending on what the case is. You set your mind on it. From time to time, you create that picture in your mind and drop it in your spirit. You see, you create it in your mind because your imaginative power is your creative ability. Are you hearing me? So you use your mind to imagine it and drop it in your spirit and your spirit will create it for you. And once you have it strong in your spirit, it will come out in your words until you live in the realm and the reality of that which you have created within your spirit. And then nobody can take it away from you because it's now so real. It's there, it's real. The circumstances may lie to you, but that's what they are now, they're lying. Now you know, you know that you know that you know you've got it. Outwardly, it may not look so, but now you know you've got it. You know. You know. Now it will be revealed in your prayer, the way you talk about it. You're not going to be asking God for it anymore. You've transcended that. Because now you know you got it. Faith knows. Because faith is evidence. You see that? Faith is evidence. It's proof. When it's faith, it's proof. You can't have faith and come back and say, I don't know why I didn't get it. Because faith doesn't know it didn't get it. Because faith got it and faith had the proof. How could you have had faith and come back to say, I don't know why I didn't get it. The moment you can think, why didn't I get it? You should know you didn't have faith. Because faith couldn't, couldn't, didn't get it. You get it? Because faith is the substance, substance. That means proof. Presence, present evidence. Faith is the title deed. Don't you understand? The title deed to unseen realities. That means when it's faith, it means you have the proof that you have it. Now, if you come back and say, I don't know why it didn't work. It didn't work. I thought you said you had evidence. You mean your evidence was a lie. If it was a lie, it was not faith. You see that? Faith is the evidence. Proof. How could you have a proof of something and say, I don't know why it didn't work. It didn't work. I thought you said you had evidence that it worked. You see? That fellow didn't know what faith was. He was living in unbelief and thought he had faith. You still there? Faith is proof. Faith is evidence. Faith is substance. I got it. I got it. I know, I know, I know. I know. Mm. I know. I'm living in the reality of it. I know, I know, I know. Glory to God, I know. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know, I know. And I give praise to God. Father, I thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. See, I'm not praying to make it happen. Because I already have it. See that? I'm not trying to make God do it. Because I have proof that I have it. That's faith. Can you see it? Hey. Paint the picture, have the image, drop it in your spirit, let your spirit create it for you. And once your spirit has it made, you got it. Now you can walk around saying, I have it. I sure do. I'm a success for life. Man, oh man, I'm a success for life. I'm telling you, I, I'll never be defeated. See that? I'll never be defeated. It's impossible. I'm a victor for life. Oh yeah, sure. Come on.
come on. I'll never be broke in my life. Never. So somebody said, ah, if something should happen and you're broke, uh, you change. Change? You don't understand this thing. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought about one day you might just wake up and discover you are now a girl? <laughs> no, does it go through your mind? That maybe one day you just sleep and then you just wake up, you that you are a man. You just suddenly, I mean, you're a man. You have maybe three, five children. Suddenly you just wake up and find you are now a girl. <laughs> no, does it go through your mind that it might happen? If that can't go through your mind, neither should this go through your mind about failure. Listen, listen. See, you can have a weapon and you don't know how to use it. You're not dangerous. And even if you know how to use it, you don't have the guts to use it, you are not dangerous. But if you got it and know how to use it and have the guts to, you're sure dangerous. If you have money in the bank, lots of money, and you don't know about it, it won't change your life. You've got to know about it to be able to use it. If you don't know, you'll live like you never had it. But if you know, you must have the faith to use it, the willingness to use it. Otherwise, it still will mean nothing. Of what use is it if somebody gave you a check of some 100 million dollars all right and somebody say ah that seems far away no it's not far away from you brother <laughs> now you say you have this hundred million dollars a check somebody gave you a check you have options what to do with it you can take a picture of it <laughs> and enlarge it and put it on your wall and every day say father I thank you it won't change your life you can hold it just frame the check and take it everywhere say look what I got it won't change your life that check is a promissory note so you got to go to the bank and get the money out and make it yours and use it that's what some of us found out we found out so much had been laid aside for us by Jesus Christ some others couldn't find out didn't even care to find out some of us found out and when we found out say hey man that means we, we, we can never be poor Oh, yeah, you can have this much and be poor. Yeah, I'll never be poor in my life. Never. With all of this, ooh, Lord Jesus. Life on earth is made and life in, he in heaven is made. How could I be poor anymore? It's a choice now. Lord. Ooh. You make a choice. Father, I'm only asking you for just one little thing. See, you're still asking for just one little thing. I've been asking for two weeks. You haven't given it to me. When will you? Oh, Lord, please wait. Another one saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. I'm so rich. Oh, glory to God. I receive. I receive. You want to make a trip? Father, I receive all the money I need for this trip in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And you go. That's all. I receive. I receive. Praise God. Amen. You got a project you're working on and you need finances you say father in the name of the lord jesus christ i receive all the money i need for this project in the name of the lord jesus i got it i got it i got it amen praise god amen you go your way then don't worry you know some people worry along with it the bible says casting all your cares mm. do that your kids upon him for he cared for you shout amen somebody oh glory to God mine oh my 
Come on, square your shoulders. Say, I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. With a success mentality. Success mentality. Victory mentality. I live on top. Always. Worship him and thank him. Worship him. Honor him.